سواء خرج الملك وهو نائم او مستيقظ لانه قد يخرج وهو نائم بالاحتلال نعم So regardless of if or regardless of whether a person there is a sexual discharge of semen whether he is asleep or, or or awake for example he could be having a wet dream when he is asleep he still has to make ghusl wa islam al kafir idha aslam al kafir yaqtasil so now we are talking about those things which necessitate us to make ghusl so the sheikh said sexual discharge of semen whether he is awake or asleep and then a muslim a non muslim accepting islam he has to make ghusl والتقاء الختانين يعني اذا التقى الرجل بزوجته يعني وغاب الذكر في فرج المراه نعم and also when a male enters into a female i.e. when the two private parts of the male and the female touch and enter into each other the, the part of the male enters into the female وموت غير الشهيد اذا مات عندنا انسان ماذا نصنع فيه؟ نغسله وجوبا ولا بد من تقصير الميت إلا الشهيد لا يغسل نعم and also when a person he dies when a person dies as long as he, is, he does not die as a martyr as a shaheed then we have to wash him so the person who dies and he is not a martyr not a shaheed then it is an obligation for us or upon us to wash his body ويجب الاقتسال على المرأة إذا طهرت من الحيطة والنفاس هذا موجبات خمسة نعم and also غسل It's, it's an obligation upon a woman once she is free from uh, bleed, from her bleeding, from menstruation. No. So, no. So, so these are the five things which necessitate or obligate ghusl upon us, five things. As we said, the sexual, the discharge of semen, and also the two private parts of a woman, uh, a male and female coming together, and also a uh, non muslim accepting islam mawt ghayr al shaheed and there also a, a person dying as long as he is not a shaheed al mawt ghayr al tamrat min al hayd wal nifas and the fifth one is a woman who has now purified herself from bleeding in terms of menstruation or post natal bleeding now we go to the section the third min izalat al najasa al mukhaffafa khuru an al mani idha waqa al thaw وقع المنع على ثوبك الآن ماذا تصنع؟ So now we go back to what we were discussing before. How do we purify and clean ourselves from the minor form of impurity or the weak type of type of impurity that comes on your clothing? We said that if a semen, if some semen now falls on your garment, on your clothing, then how do you clean yourself and purify yourself from it? إذا صلى وعلى ثوبه منع فالصلاة صحيحة من المنع. If a person prays and there is some semen on his clothing, then his prayer is correct. Why? Because we have already said that money it is tahir, it is pure. لكن السنة إذا كان وقع المني على الثوب وكان رطب فماذا تصنع؟ ترش المني رش نضح وإن كان جار تحطه هكذا حد. نعم. The 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 sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Or that which is more recommended is that if some semen is discharged and it falls onto your clothing, then if it is wet, if it is still wet, then you throw a little amount of water on it or you just put some water on it like this. <coughs> if, however, the semen is dry and it's on your clothing, then you rub it off like this, you rub it off. Now, But if a person prays in that garment, With some semen on there, then there is no problem, and his prayer is correct and accepted. So we say that the weak form or the light form of impurity are three things. The urine of a baby boy who is under the two years of age and he hasn't started eating food yet, solids yet. And most likely his, his nourishment and his food is the milk of his uh, mother. الثاني المذي وقد قلنا هو سائل لزج ليس له لهم كالماء يخرج عند التفكير نجس ولا ضد أن ينضح إذا وقع منه شيء على الثوب. And we said we said secondly uh, المذي which is that discharge which comes out from a person private part from the front is a what is a clear liquid. And it's, it's mostly due to a uh, person thinking about intimate desires. Again, this is najasa, this is impurity, and a person has to clean his, uh, 
gone from it. الثالث الماني طاهر لكن يستحب إنه إذا كان بطء أن ينضح وإذا كان جاف أن يحد نعم. And also the money which is a semen and again although it is pure and you pray is correct in that garment but it's recommended and it's better for a person it's better for a person to you know shower or throw some drops of water on his clothes or if it's dry that he takes it off like this, he rubs it off. When salafi, for salafi, halal, then abba. But if he prays in that garment and he hasn't washed it, he hasn't rubbed it off, then his prayer is correct because we said many this type of discharge it is pure. بقية النجاسات نجاسة متوسطة لا بد من رش الماء مع العصر وبهذا أتمنى من زالة النجاسات. So every other type of impurity, any other type of impurity which doesn't fit into one of these two categories, then we say it is the middle one. The one which is not as severe and not very light at the same time. And this one, we have to throw some water on it and at the same time squeeze the water out of the, out of, out of the garment. Bowl al-Adam. So, included in this type is the urine of a human being. Ghaib al-Adam. Excrement of a human being. Bowl al-Waroth malaykukallakna. The urine and the excrement of the dung of an animal whose meat is not eaten. Dab al-Hayr wa nifas the blood of Hayr and Nifas and also the urine of a, a little girl, a baby girl who is under the two years of age and she is also being breastfed as we said, spill a small amount of water on the impurity and then skew, squeeze their water out and also if a person places this clothing in a washing machine, then it's enough. Now, إذن أخذنا إزالة النجاسات على ثلاثة أقسام. Now, so therefore, we have studied and we have understood the washing and cleaning the forms of impurities in these three types. وقع بول الآدمي أو دب الحيض والنفاس على اللباس. Now, let's say on a garment, the urine of a human being or the blood of, uh, of a woman's menses, it falls onto a, a piece of clothing, a garment. A person then has spilled some water on it and has squeezed the water out. And then after this, after this washing and squeezing the water out, we can still see some after effects of that impurity, meaning there's some discoloring there, or there's still, still, still some smell there. Then there's nothing wrong with this, it doesn't affect the person. Why? Because the person has completed and fulfilled that which Allah has obligated upon him. We mentioned in the previous lesson, which was after Fajr, we mentioned the description of wudu, the description of a person making ablution, we mentioned the description of a person making tayyamun, and we also mentioned the description of a person performing ghusl, and we said that al ghusl, a person taking a ritual bath, is of two types. وكل ما يلبس على الرجلين. نعم. And now the thing which we are left with is wiping over the khuf, which is the leather socks, or wiping over the socks which are made out of cloth, which we are all wearing now, or wiping over anything which is worn on the foot. شروط المسح على الجوربين على الخفين. نعم. شروط لابد للمسح على الجوربين أو الخفين أو المسح كمكم الله بعن على على هذا الجزمة شوف لا النعل الثاني جزمة أحذية شوف لا ليس الحذاء مفتوح هذا المغلق إيه إيه شوف إذا المسح على الجوارب المسح على كل ما يلبس على الجلين وانتهى الأمر نعم so now we need to understand the conditions of a person wiping over the khufain, the leather socks, or the, uh, the cl cl socks which are made out of fabric of clothing, or shoes, or trainers, i.e. 
the condition of wiping over anything which is worn on a person's foot. So in order now for us to wipe over it and not wash the foot in wudu, there, there are certain conditions that have to be fulfilled. The first condition is that before a person puts this on, whether it's his shoes or his trainers or his leather socks or the uh, fabric socks, before he put it on, then he has to be in a state of, of purity, of tahara, and he must have washed his feet with water. Now, so a person has to be uh, and also the second condition now is that that which you are wearing on your foot in itself it has to be pure and clean and not najis, not impure and to and also that that which you are wearing it has to cover most of your foot the most of your foot has to be covered by that which you are wearing so even now these new socks what they call the ankle socks and they come over some of the ankle then this you can also make mas over why because they cover most of the foot but for example, a person wiping over sandals or slippers, we can't wipe over them because they don't cover most of the foot. They show most of the foot. And then the fourth condition is that when you're wiping over this thing that you're wearing over your feet, then you have to do it within the limits of the times that we have been told or legislated. Meaning, as for a person who is resident and living in one single place, then he has one day and one night in order for him to wipe over uh, the hoof or the leather sock or the fabric socks. Um, so he has 24 hours. And the person who is a traveler, he's traveling somewhere, he's on a journey, what is the distance of a journey, then he has three days and three nights, meaning he has 72 hours in which he can keep wiping over without washing it. Now, and then the fifth condition is that you can only make masjid you can only wipe instead of washing when you, you're, you're in a state of minor impurity, not major impurity, not hadith